All right. We are going to get started with our yoga practice today. Today's class is going to be um, very focused on looking inwards. So assuring that we are able to focus internally, acknowledging the external, double check your surroundings, that you're happy with the position of your mat, the sound of my voice, the music, you can see me okay. Um, and then whenever you're ready, you can take yourself down to your mat if you're not already there and find yourself in your relaxation pose. All right, so beginning in relaxation, Shavasana for most of us. Making sure, as I mentioned just a moment ago, that we are comfortable. We're happy with any distractions that are in our space. We're acknowledging any noises we hear and then giving ourselves permission to relax. And as we're laying on the floor, allowing a little investigating to happen, some exploration as we take that body scan making any necessary fidget across hips and shoulders, down our legs, through our arms, even in the neck. Noticing if we have to rock the head into place as we try to find alignment, running long neutral lines through the torso and level across hips and shoulders. Recognizing if there is anything that's a little bit out of alignment or feels unusual or different in any way, making these reflections or taking in these notes, but doing so without judgment, acknowledging where we are and how we feel, not being very critical of ourselves. And as we continue to lay here, oh my goodness, does it ever feel good to give ourselves permission to rest, to unplug, and to only have one responsibility right now, and that is to pay attention to our body, our breathing, noticing our breath, being aware of how it feels with our inhale, bringing air into our body, and noticing our exhale, feeling softness, feeling peace. And when we're ready, I'll ask us to reach our arms long up over our head Oh, nice big stretch. Feel free to fidget or move around through the hips, shoulders, or back. <sighs> Filling up the rib cage, engaging the diaphragm, the lungs a little bit more fully. And releasing those arms. Gently gathering the legs into the body, giving ourselves a knees to chest pose, also known as our big hug and we can rock right to left, side to side as we do so. Let's keep a hold of the legs and start to roll through the feet ankles. Perhaps we're releasing some cricks and cracks. Maybe it just feels good to work through the joints. Preparing for that single leg hip stretch. We'll keep a hold of the right knee as we extend that left leg down deep into the floor. Try to draw the right knee open towards that right shoulder. Firmly pressing or anchoring that left hip into the mat. Noticing any stretch that's coming across the hips. We can choose to stay here or cross the leg over towards that left shoulder, noticing 
any sensation change. Maybe it's concentrated now on the outside of our right hip. Bringing that leg through the middle and release down. Left leg comes up into the body, opening the knee towards the left shoulder, pressing that right leg firmly into the mat. And we can draw the knee over towards the right shoulder now. Coming through the middle and release the leg. We'll take our feet flat onto the floor, arms down by our sides, preparing for our glute bridges. With our inhale, we lift the hips up to the ceiling and then exhale, slowly release down, really articulating vertebrae by vertebrae. Inhale, lifting the hips up, activating those glutes. Exhale, slowly lower. Inhale, lifting up. Exhale, lower down. Two more times. Inhale, lifting up, feet and hands are flat on the ground. Exhale, release. And one more, big inhale, lift. Exhale. All right, let's take our time as we come over onto our sides, gently pressing ourselves up onto all fours, placing hands beneath shoulders, knees beneath hips, flat backs, soft elbows, and long necks. We begin with our spinal balance. Extending right arm forward, thumb up to the ceiling, and press that left leg back behind us, lowering down. Inhale, left arm, right leg, creating a strong straight line. Exhale, lower. Inhale, right. Exhale. Inhale, left. Exhale. Inhale, right. Exhale. Inhale, left. Exhale, we'll do one more each side. Inhaling right, exhale down. Inhale, left. Exhale, now hold it here with our table, finding cats and cows. Inhale, untuck the tailbone as we look forward with our eyes. Exhale, tuck the tailbone round the back and finish with a tucked in chin. Inhale, open to cow. Exhale, round up into cat. Inhale, open. Exhale, round. Inhale, open last time through. And exhale, round up. Pressing back into child's pose. We can extend the arms as much as they'll go, sit the heels back as far as they'll go comfortably with the knees and hips and try to rest our head. While we're here, let's walk the hands over to the right side of our mat, placing left hand on top. I love this shoulder stretch, opening up laterally down that entire left side of the arm, shoulder, body. walking our hands through the middle, taking the hands to the left edge with right hand on top, and then pull away from that right side. And as is with every pose we do in yoga, listening to the body, making modifications, adjust so that it feels good for you today. Coming through the middle, we'll take ourselves slowly up into down dog, placing the toes underneath, lifting those hips up, and as this is our first one, let's explore. Press away from spread fingers and pedal the feet. Walking the dog, right to left foot, heel to toe. Now we'll take a half series, pressing those heels down to start. We inhale forward through to plank position. We could stay high on the toes or bring the knees to the floor in kneeling plank. Exhale, lower down to the mat. Now inhale, lift up into cobra. Maybe it's modified, maybe it's full. 
Exhale, release and press back into down dog or child's pose if you'd prefer. And we'll do that half series one more time. Inhale forward. Exhale lower. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, press back. Now at this point, I'll ask us to walk our hands and feet in. Coming halfway up to monkey. Flat back, soft knees. Pulling those bellies in as high as they'll go. Now softening our knees, inhale, reverse swan dive, lift tall. And exhale, sweep, sitting down into chair pose. Weight back in the heels, lifting up through the chest, always open through heart center. Now inhale, lift our arms nice and tall. And exhale, release. Very good. Now if you didn't quite make it up to the top of our mat, we'll step there now taking ourselves into Tadasana or mountain pose, preparing for our sun salutation series. Roll those shoulders down, right down our back, squeezing through the scapula, engaging our abdominal muscles with soft knees, feeling all four corners of our feet pressing into the ground, big toe, little toe, inner and outer edges of our heels. At this point, I will ask you to join me in doing our sun sal two times through. Ready? We inhale, lift our hands up nice and high, now exhale, swan dive, hinging at our hips into forward fold. Nice big stretch at the back of the legs. Inhale, halfway up into monkey, bend those knees. Exhale, release the body into forward fold. Bend the knees, placing the hands on the ground. Step back into plank position. From here, let's press all the way back, down dog or child's pose. And at this point in sun cell, you can stay here while we go through the flow series one time or join me as we inhale forward into plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, lift up through cobra. Exhale, press back, down dog or child's pose. Now all together, walking or stepping our feet all the way up between our hands, taking as many steps as you need, and then coming into a monkey pose. Softening those knees, inhale, reverse swan dive, lift tall. Exhale, sweep, sitting through chair. One more time. Inhale, lift. Exhale, swan dive, hinging from hips into forward fold. Inhale, halfway up to monkey. Exhale, forward fold. Softening the knees, placing the hands on the ground, stepping back into plank position. Pressing back, down dog or child's pose. Staying here or joining together in flow. Inhale, forward to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra stretch. Squeeze the shoulders, lift the chest. Exhale, pressing back, down dog or child's pose. Inhale, walking or stepping our feet together. Exhale, halfway up to monkey. Pull the shoulder blades, bellies in. Softening those knees. Inhale, reverse swan dive, lift tall. Exhale, sweep, sitting back into chair. Inhale, lift up. And exhale, release. Very nice. From here, we're going to start our warrior series. So if you can stay tall at the top of your mat, I'll face you so you can see me from a better angle. So at the top of our mat, warrior one, placing our right foot directly to the front, left foot comes back behind us, keeping the hips square, shoulders square, feet roughly hips with distance apart, feet are flat on the floor. Choosing to have our arms up above our head or down through heart center, listen to your body, roll the shoulders down, Bellies in, and then rock forward into that right knee. Now in warrior one, really paying attention to all four corners of both feet. A little stretch up that back left calf muscle, right up through the Achilles. Feeling very proud, wearing a crown on top of our head proudly. Heart center is open. Shoulders are a long ways away from those ears. From warrior one, we open up into warrior two, turning to the side of our mat, shoulders and hips now face the long edge, that side, bending into our right knee, keeping the knee stacked on top of the ankle, facing the same direction as our toes. Pulling those shoulders back, taking a few deep breaths, noticing the strength and the stretch through the hips and thighs. <sighs> Preparing for reverse warrior. Turning the palm up, 
Lift away from your front leg, all the way up with that hand towards the ceiling. If ever the shoulder bothers you, take the hand to the hip. Otherwise, continuing to bend forward into that right knee, long arm, relaxed shoulders, keeping that hip open as we take one more big inhale. Now exhale, fan all the way down, waterfall, back into downward facing dog. However you need to do it, trying to work on that functional fitness, our coordination and agility. From our down dog, we're going to repeat that. So let's walk our hands and feet all the way up together. We'll come halfway up to monkey. Softening our knees, big inhale, reverse swan dive, lift tall. And exhale, release. Making sure we're at the top of our mat, left foot sit in front, this time as we place right foot behind us, warrior one. Finding our position, working the arms into place. Maybe they're the same as the right foot, maybe they're different. Shoulders down, bellies in, bending forward into that front knee. Remembering we have no judgment, no competition, and no ego in yoga. However, our body is asking to work through the poses, through our transitions between poses. Let's do so, so that we're enjoying our practice, never feeling frustrated or rushed. <sighs> enjoying this warrior one pose. And we'll take one more inhale and open up into warrior two. Maybe we need to increase the space between feet as we open up through the hips and shoulders, stacking arms on top of leg, bending forward through that left knee so that it's right on top of the ankle, pointing in the same direction as those toes. Really strong arms. Very good. Let's get ready for a reverse warrior. Bringing that left hand up nice and high to the sky. We're expanding through the left side of our body. As we lift that left arm, let's keep the left shoulder down tendency as we lift the arm is to also shrug the shoulder. Let's not shrug our shoulder. One more inhale. Exhale, waterfall all the way down through lunge, back into our downward facing dog position. Now holding down dog or child's pose if you'd prefer. The option is to join me in doing our flow series two times. So if you'd like to do the work, joining me now as we inhale forward through plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Long through the torso. Exhale, press back, down dog or child's pose. Inhale forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, pressing back, down dog or child's pose. Now at this point, I'll invite you to join me in a lunge. We can kick our right foot high up to the sky. Tuck that knee in as we step the foot forward in between our hands. However you need to get your knee there, 90 degree angle if we're able to. We come up to warrior one, bringing that left heel flat on the ground, slowly walking our way all the way up. Now you might notice that your stance feels quite short. That's good. We want it to be short this time. So if it feels really far apart, bring it in a little bit wide, a little bit short, conservative. As we prepare to come into our pyramid pose, we'll slowly bring our hands down to our hips, straightening out that front right leg. If you feel like your feet need to get a little wider for basic support, go ahead and do that now. Soft through the front knee as we hinge forward. Trying to leave hips and shoulders level, not opening up, staying flat with our belly button. As soon as we feel that stretch, we stop. We can place the hands on the leg, the foot or the floor. I want us to work on keeping our back as flat as possible. And really use your breathing to help you with this stretch. Slow, deep breaths, targeting that hamstring. <sighs> Choosing to stay here 
or you can join me in progressing to our balance. Softening our right leg, walking forward with our hands so that the right leg is perpendicular to the ground, bringing that left leg about parallel to the floor. This is our tripod. Choosing to stay in tripod position or opening up to balance half moon, we'll lift that left hip on top of right, exposing the body to the side of the mat. And then if you're able to lift that left hand up, you can try to bring it all the way to the ceiling. Holding, holding our balanced half moon, you'll feel a tremendous amount of stretch through the hips and shoulders, but also a lot of strengthening and stability that has to happen. One more inhale. Exhale, slowly bring our feet together. Nice little squat here in the middle as we step all the way back into downward facing dog. Let's make sure we're not rushing that, taking our time. We can always come into child's pose if you'd prefer. Now from here, you can choose to stay in your stretch or you can join me in a plank pose. Moving forward through plank. You can do this on your hands or your forearms if you'd prefer. Trying to have your hand or elbow right underneath your shoulder. And we also want to be able to work strong through the torso with supporting legs. Squeeze the leg muscles. And if you'd prefer, you can bring your knees to the floor. Now we're going to open up into the side. I'll recommend that we place that right knee on the floor as we open up the left hand and left foot. The option as we're now supporting ourselves on right hand and right knee is to lift that left leg up parallel to the ground in your side plank. So many options. Good. We hold this for one more inhale. Exhale, bringing the hand down, coming through center plank, which will hold. Again, this can be done on your forearms or your hands, knees or toes. We'll complete this now on the other side, taking that left knee down, turning the body to the side so that we can support ourselves on hand and knee. With our side plank, choosing to have the hand up and maybe even bringing that top leg now parallel with the ground. One more inhale. Exhale, coming through the middle, holding our plank for just one more big breath. And then press all the way back, down dog for child pose. Amazing. Now we'll prepare to start that series on the second side. We'll take our left foot up to the ceiling. Bend the knee into the chest as we kick the foot forward between our hands into lunge, helping the leg get there however you need to for knee above ankle. Now we prepare to transition into warrior one, placing that right foot completely on the floor, softening the knee as we slowly walk up. Take our time, short stance, wide base of support. Bellies are in, hips and shoulders are stacked. Arms can come up or find heart center. Holding our warrior one position for a couple of breaths as we regain our composure. Check in with our balance in this two foot stance. Releasing our hands to our hips preparing for our pyramid stretch. We can straighten out the legs, adjust the legs if we need to, maintaining hips and shoulders square to the front and start to hinge forward right from the hip. As soon as we feel a stretch, we're going to take the hands onto the leg, foot floor, or if anyone's using yoga blocks, this is a great way to extend the reach or extend your limbs by resting your hands on yoga blocks. Couple big breaths. Noticing the stretch that we're feeling up the back of the legs. Now choosing if you'd like to stay here or join me in the next progression, which is our balance. Softening the knee as we bring our hands forward, taking that right leg up parallel to the floor. That left leg is supporting. And if you'd like to move from tripod to balance half moon, we flip the hips open, reaching that top arm towards the ceiling, trying to hold the leg parallel to the floor. 
either looking down, looking forward, or looking up to the hand. It's honestly personal preference. Holding this for one more big inhale. Now exhale, slowly coming down through that little squat. And then we'll work our way back through to down dog or child's pose. Really well done, everybody. Take a couple of breaths here in your stretch before we come into our third and final warrior series. We'll begin with our lunge position on the right foot. If you can all kick your right foot high to the sky, tuck the knee in as we kick it up between hands, helping the foot get there, placing that left foot on the ground so we can walk up to warrior one, lifting the arms up nice and tall. From warrior one, we open through to warrior two, turning to the long edge of our mat, shoulders down, hips open, bending forward into the right knee. Now, the first series, we did reverse warrior, bringing our hand away from the knee. This time we're doing triangle. So we'll be reaching forward towards the front foot. How we start that is from warrior two, straightening out that front leg, leave it a little bit soft, pitch that back hip, and then reach forward, 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 forward. And then the hand comes down, resting knuckle against inside of leg, left arm comes up high to the ceiling. What I'd like us to notice is we can always place the hand on the hip if that's better for the shoulder. Working on really creating long, flat lines as we yet again work on strengthening and stretching through those major joints. Big inhale, lifting up, softening through the leg as we come all the way down through our plank position taking ourselves back into down dog or child's pose. <sighs> taking that left leg up when you're ready, big inhale. Exhale, bend the knee in, kick it all the way front. However you need to get there, however much time it takes, finding warrior one when you're ready. Placing that back foot flat on the floor, walking up the leg, lifting our arms so tall, or choosing to come down through heart center, release the shoulders and bending forward into that front knee. Couple big deep breaths, finding that composure. <sighs> Strong through the core, open through heart center, preparing to turn into warrior two, bringing yourself to the long edge of our mat. Maybe you need to separate the feet a little bit. I know I usually do. Bend forward into that left knee, square those shoulders, Feel the energy. <sighs> Preparing for triangle. We straighten out that front leg, soft knee, pitch the back hip, reach forward as long as you'll go before pivoting the arms, turning your body at that 90, bringing your arms up and down. See how I'm drawing a straight line from my bottom hand up to my top hand, very gently resting that arm against the inside of the leg. Now, if you saw, if I had bike, bike headlights on each hip and each shoulder, you would see those headlights. They haven't twisted or shifted. And then take a big inhale, lift up, softening that leg. Exhale, slow spiral. Oh, last spiral of the day as we press back, down dog or child. And I will offer you one more opportunity to choose if you'd like to stay here in your stretch or join me in our half series, which we'll do two more times. If you're working with me, we inhale forward through to plank. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, pressing back, down dog or child. Inhale forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, cobra. And exhale, press back, down dog or child's pose. Holding your stretch for a moment. Let's take a moment of reflection as we acknowledge any progressions, any newfound sensation. Now slowly, all together, working forward into plank. Chaturanga, slow lower into the stomach where we'll stay. We can turn onto one ear as we release the arms back behind us to our sides. 
Letting go of your abdominal muscles for a moment, feeling our backs relax. As we take a couple of breaths, preparing for prone spine extension work. If we've been sitting down all day, this part can often be the most rewarding, yet also the most uncomfortable. So please find your version of what we'll do as locust and make it your own. So coming into Superman, let's turn the nose towards the ground. Make sure the legs are within our body's frame, nice and close together. Now you can choose to keep your hands down in back of us, in which case we'll turn them so palms face into the thighs. Otherwise, a nice safe option is hands underneath shoulders, like a baby cobra. Now we'll start by rolling the shoulders in, squeeze the belly buttons up to spine, lift the chest, lift those arms back, and then if you're able to, let's lift those legs up as well. Flying high in our locust pose. Nice big breath. Now you'll notice you're breathing, not able to go through the stomach forward. So we'll breathe instead through the back ribs. Think about those back ribs now expanding. We'll try to hold this for two more big inhales. Last big breath in. Relax onto your other ear. Completely letting go of those abdominal muscles, the arms, the legs. Now slowly turning the head down. Hands come back underneath ribs, pressing up for cobra stretch. Whew. And then we press back into child's pose. And I'm going to recommend a wide knee to child's pose. Very restorative stretching through the hips, the back, and then just drop that head. From our child's pose, we're going to lift up into tabletop as we're nearing the end of our practice, taking a couple of nice big stretches. This first one will be gate pose. In tabletop, we are going to take that right foot and step it out to the side. Kind of like you're getting ready for a half froggy. Now from here, you'll notice that your foot is flat, toes facing forward. I want you to try your best to walk all the way up. Now you're kneeling. Hopefully this is comfortable for you. If not, double up, or if you happen to have your towel or pillow nearby for cushioning, you can put that padding underneath that left knee. We'll take our right knuckles to the outside of the leg, bringing that left arm up nice and high. A big inhale for gate pose, exhale, bend. Nice big stretch as we very gently reach down that right leg, exposing the left side, keeping the hip on top of knee, even pressing it over towards the left a little bit. If the arm and top is bothering you, remember right on the hip is perfect. A big inhale, lift up. And then slowly exhale, release down through tabletop. Take your time doing so. Take that left foot out when you're ready. Just like our side plank, you've got one knee down, one foot open, slowly working your way up, finding those T arms for balance. Now, hopefully we're happy with our padding, our supporting leg. We'll bring our left knuckles to the outside of our left thigh. Turn that right hand all the way up, just like reverse warrior, opening up and thinking about getting longer as we lift out of this hip. Again, you want to think more about pushing forward than leaning into the left side. Now from gate, we inhale open and exhale release through tabletop. And then you can press back into down dog or child's pose. Slowly working our way through tabletop all the way down onto our backs. Taking your time doing so. If there's sweaters or socks or blankets that you need, go ahead and take this opportunity to grab them now. <sighs> Preparing for our final stretches. The first one is going to be our upside down pigeon. We'll start by taking figure four with our right foot crossing over the thigh, choosing to stay here very passively, 
Otherwise we can actively push the right knee away with our right hand or thread the hand underneath that left thigh. We can use our right elbow to press or prop the knee open as we pull the legs towards the face, trying our best to keep the facial features soft and the shoulders relaxed. One more inhale. Exhale, releasing the feet to the floor. Crossing the left foot over, figure four. Again, this can be very passive and relaxing, or we can actively stretch through it, pressing the knee away with the hand or threading the hands under. Trying to keep the body flat on the floor as we draw the legs in towards the body, pressing the left knee open. And again, I'll remind everyone, to relax our shoulders as best we can. Same with the face, the jaw, the eyes. And release down. Keeping our feet flat on the floor, we'll open into our butterfly. Soles of feet pressing together, shoulders and hips open and relaxed, knees out wide. I like my hands on my belly for this particular pose so that I can really embellish or feel that stomach rise and fall. Slowly drawing the knees in together. I'll ask us to bring them in for a nice big hug as we prepare for our final stretch, which will be spinal twist. Having the knees up at about 90 degrees, letting the arms drop out to our sides, forming a T with the body. We lower both knees over to the right, and then we can look over that left arm. Noticing any stretch down the left side of our body, to the arm, the shoulder, Maybe the hip. And inhale, bringing both legs up. Exhaling over to the left. And we can look over that right arm. Inhale, lifting the knees up, and then finding your relaxation pose. Whether that's Shavasana with legs and arms extended, or maybe butterfly, even fetal position. Let's grant ourselves permission to enjoy this final relaxation. Closing our eyes. releasing tension from the face, the neck and the shoulders, relaxing our abdominal muscles, allowing the stomach to rise and to fall with each breath. Noticing how this is feeling. Being grateful to ourselves and for the opportunity to take this class, the dedication for your commitment to your health, both physical and mental, even feeling emotionally recharged. Taking that final big inhale, filling up as much as we're able to. And on that exhale, releasing everything. Wiggling your fingers and toes. 
and rolling through the wrists and ankles, reawakening the body. Maybe we wanted to stay in Shavasana for a lot longer, and maybe you have the opportunity to do so, in which case I invite you to stay here. Otherwise, let's bring ourselves through baby into easy seated. And once we find ourselves in that upright seated position, unless you've chosen to stay relaxing down, we'll find our final breath. Taking our hands up above head with our inhale, finding prayer, exhaling down through heart center. Namaste. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate you joining me today and I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, I guess I will see you all next week. Thank you.